In this video, we're going to look at how to get a consistent mix level and avoid distorting your mix. So as you're aware by now, recording levels are really important. When mixing, the master track is what is going to be recorded as our final mix. So we need to look at the level meter on our master track like we did the levels of the tracks when we were in the recording phase of the project. We want to make sure we don't have our mix level too low or we'll risk increasing the sound of hiss and noise in the mix when we have to turn it up later to match the levels of other songs. And we also need to watch out that our mixing levels aren't too high to avoid clipping and distortion. So where do we start? Well, you might be inclined to start at the beginning of the song, but for this song, that's not actually the best place to start setting our mixing levels. So where do we start? Well, it's actually best to start at the loudest, most dense part of the song. And what I mean by that is this part of the song with the most number of tracks actively playing audio. So in our case, the final verse or the final chorus would be the best place for us because that's where the drums and the harmony vocals come in. Before that, those things aren't there. So the song will not be as loud. And if we make sure that part of the song doesn't clip on the master track meter, the quieter parts shouldn't clip either. So let's look at the master track. That's this area right here. I'm going to play just a little bit here and just watch the meters in that area. What made this pain pass away? Now, you'll notice it's different than the other tracks. The meters in the center are very much like the meters on the other tracks, and those are called peak meters. Now, a peak meter reacts very quickly and shows us the absolute peaks of our mix and also shows us in the number above, right here, how much headroom we have left. Now, in this case, I actually went over by 0.7 decibels and I've got the red light on, but that will show us the difference between the loudest part of our mix and the loudest thing possible. In this case, I was 0.7 decibels over that level. The meters on the outside are called RMS meters. RMS stands for root mean square, which is really just a fancy way of saying the average level of the mix. RMS is more representative of how we actually perceive loudness, but it doesn't show us the peaks, so we need to use these two meters together. When we're putting together the mix, one of the important things to look at on the RMS meter is a little green box around the 0 to plus 6 mark. So that's just right here. We want our average level to be in that zone. If the level goes above that periodically, that's okay. If it goes below that periodically, that's okay but it shouldn't stay in the red section above or too far below for a majority of the song. So by watching the average level on the RMS meter and the headroom on our peak meter, we can make sure we get a good strong level that doesn't clip the output. Now, back to putting together this mix, from an artistic standpoint, we really need to decide on what instruments are gonna be the focus of our song and work out from there. So for me, I've decided that the vocal and the acoustic guitar are going to be the focus of my mix. So I'm going to go down to the mixer here, and I'm going to hold Alt and hit Mute. I did it on the vocal channel. I need to actually unmute this vocal folder to let the vocal out, because it's going to come through here. And now I'm also going to unmute my acoustic guitar. So I can just hear the lead vocal and the acoustic guitar together. I'm going to go to this last verse. And in the timeline, just make a selection here of that verse. Repeat is on, so I'll leave it like that. And that'll just let that repeat over and over again while we add things and check our levels as we go. So I'm going to start by trying to get the balance as I want it between the vocal and the acoustic guitar. Then I'm going to add in the bass, and then the drums, and then the shakers, then the harmony vocal, the synth, and the lead guitar. Because in my mind, that is the order of importance for me in this song. And as I add those things in, you can watch the level in the master fader will go up just ever so slightly each time. And just a reminder, this isn't our final mix, but it will be much closer than it was before we started this. So let's hit play here and start adjusting. What made this pain pass away? A the acoustics a little loud compared to the vocal. The same old way. We come what may right? Let's try the bass. Pain pass away. Our paths will cross again so loud. The same old way. That seems better. 
Drums. Oh, and of course, they're going through this folder track, so I need to unmute the folder track. That seems loud to me. Now let's try to shake this. Harmony vocal. We come what may a bit loud. Pain will pass away. Our paths will cross again someday. The same old way. We come what may this pain will pass away. Our guitars not do it too much. Here, here. The same yeah, a little bit. We come what may this okay. Pain. Now our level's just a, a little on the on the lower side, but I'm okay with that because there's still lots of changes we're gonna make. So how do you know when the balance is right? Well, you really have to trust yourself and trust your ears. If you're watching this now. It's likely because you want to make music, and if you want to make music, you've probably listened to a lot of music. And if you've listened to a lot of music, you know what music is supposed to sound like. So it's just a matter of practice to be able to get the music coming out of the speakers sounding like the music you hear in your head. You may also need some of the tools we'll be looking at in the rest of the mixing videos. I encourage you to take some time and listen to your favorite records and listen closely. Listen as a music producer, listen for all the sounds, and just see how many things you can hear now that you've been going through this process.